Good morning, Manchester, and welcome to the November 22nd edition of The Pulse. I'm Erica Rozek. And I'm Jackson Converse. This week on The Pulse, we highlight an event where locals gave more than thanks in this giving time, and how an event right here at MHS got Tiny Tykes out and active on the Memorial Field track. We have all of that and more on this week's edition of The, the Pulse. Pulse. Moving from superheroes to local heroes, town locals recently gathered together over a great cause. Savannah Peak travels to downtown Manchester to see how town residents are making sure no one goes hungry during this Thanksgiving season. On November 11th and 12th, people donated to the Hunger Food Drive run by Mac Charities at local Manchester grocery stores. While many people played an important role in making the Hunger Food Drive successful, we spoke to Phil Leggett, the pantry manager at Mac Charities, who organized this event. This is the 15th annual event, and this will be my actually actual third participant in this. From pasta to breakfast foods and even Thanksgiving dinner, the Hunger Food Drive meets everything. So one of the things that I would help people to make sure that the people that we serve here in our community would have a Thanksgiving meal. You know, so this is geared to where um, the donations will be coming in, where we're asking for, you know, turkeys and chickens and uh, holiday fixings, uh, where we'll be able to supply those in the community. The food donated during this event will help people and families all over Manchester get what they need for the upcoming holiday season. We would like to thank Mac Charities and everyone who participated in this amazing work done for our community, especially during the holiday season. From Manchester, this has been Savannah Peak Report. Thank you to all who participated in helping this noble cause. It's great to see people in our town help out others in this time of giving. With the harvest season past us, farms around Manchester are looking for ways to engage with locals. PGRT's shows us Asakita Farms is bringing in locals through donations of their own, while also letting residents get acquainted with some of their younger, cuter inhabitants. The word farm might not be the first thing that springs to mind in a conversation about Manchester, but Asakita Acres is elevating agriculture through a variety of programs to engage the public. From goat yoga to piglet socials, Asakita Acres is ready to welcome you down to the farm. Tracy Longoria, Asakita's owner, sees the value in connecting people and animals. The biggest reason why we do piglet socials is because most people don't ever get the opportunity to actually hold or pet or interact with piglets. So this is a huge educational event that we do here. People actually get to go in, they get to have the piglets climb all over them, they get to pet them, give them belly rubs, and they get a huge ed education about the pigs as well. The Piglet Social is an event done here at Asakita Farms where people can play and interact with pigs and learn about what it's like to be on the farm and care for these animals. This is my first time hanging out with piglets. They're just like really calming, just like holding them and hanging out with them. I don't know. It's really nice. I think it definitely made my day. We've been looking forward to this for a while. The workers here at Asakita Acres demonstrate resourcefulness by repurposing old Halloween decorations into a favorite treat for these very social swines by taking pumpkin donations to feed to their animals, saving money and giving their animals their favorite treat. If you have any pumpkins after the Halloween season, stop by at Asakita Farms to donate to these beautiful animals. From The Pulse, this has been PGRT's reporting. Thanks to those who donated pumpkins to help our local farms. Playing with those pretty pocket-sized piglets sure seems like fun. Speaking of fun, even though the name of the place is Workspace, Bella Lombardo visits this town hotspot that's giving local artists an enjoyable and entertaining place to display their talents. In the heart of Main Street, a seemingly nondescript building offers a true treat for your eyes, showcasing the literary and artistic treasures of New England. We talked to manager Dr. Stacey Zakin about why they highlight these different pieces of art and literature at Workspace. So Workspace is owned and operated by the town of Manchester and we are here to invest in the community and support entrepreneurial growth, business development, as well as cultural gatherings and community. 
exhibits. This year we chose one of our exhibits to be author and illustrator because at many of our events there are many people who discuss, oh I want to write a book or I'm starting to write a book and we thought well, it would be great if uh, people who are in the process of or have already published a book could actually be showcased here. This exhibit highlights a diverse group of authors and illustrators, each with a unique tale to tell. This art show and workspace is not only an exhibit, it's a celebration of storytelling and creativity that thrives in our community. If you want to come see any of this beautiful artwork, you can come to Workspace any day in the month of November. From The Pulse, this has been Bella Lombardo reporting. We appreciate Workspace for giving local artists a platform to showcase their work and will be staying tuned for more events in the future. Workspace, like many local businesses on Main Street, is preparing for a busy Thanksgiving weekend. Madison Scott takes us down to meet with town director Steve Stefano and gets a closer look at how the town is getting ready to handle the holiday rush. Today we're going to talk to Steve Stefano, the town manager, to see what this holiday season means to Manchester. Uh, I think it's a leadership position within town um, and, you know, ensuring that our town departments are, again, being effective and efficient and responsive to our community. Um, that we're reaching everyone in a fair and equitable manner. Uh, and then, you know, being a resource for our elected body, for the mayor, um, in terms of providing guidance and feedback on various policies that are gonna influence the way that Manchester develops. Uh, and, you know, as we move further on into the 21st century, the community that we've become. What does it mean for the town of Manchester around the holiday season? Like, what kind of how do you think like the events that are planned like really help like the community come together? So yeah, I think the holidays are especially um, you know special here in Manchester. Notably, with the Manchester Road Race coming on Thanksgiving. Uh, personally, it's my absolute favorite day of the year, and I think absolutely nothing beats Thanksgiving morning in Manchester, Connecticut. Uh, I've run it every year, I think since two thousand one. Um, and just the atmosphere, the festivity, um, the crowd, uh, the sort of joy is just it's the great. I, I always recommend anyone that hasn't been there. Um, so I think it's Manchester at its best on Thanksgiving. Thank you to Mr. Sofano for meeting with us today to talk about the many events that Manchester hosts that bring the community together. From the Pulse, this has been Madison Scott Reporting. We thank Mr. Steve Stefano and all the other town workers for putting in so much effort to ensure our Turkey Day traditions run smoothly. Be sure to attend the festivities on Main Street tomorrow morning. As one road race was gearing up, another one caught the eye of some of Manchester's youngest residents. Mia Gilbert takes us to the track where this past Saturday, tiny tykes from all across the town flocked to MHS to take part in the annual Little Manchester Road Race. Running is a great way to stay fit and active. Manchester is known internationally for hosting America's top turkey day trot, but this doesn't mean our youngest members of the community have to miss out. The Little Manchester Road Race allows children ages 12 and under the opportunity to participate in this annual Thanksgiving tradition. The Little Manchester Road Race is kind of an offshoot of the big race and we wanted to reach out to uh, the community and the region and give the younger kids a chance. Obviously running 4.748 miles is quite a bit. So we wanted to just create something for them. It's been around 15 years or more and we've only been at the high school the past five, seven years. <laughs> For the last 15 years, this road race has given families the opportunity for younger kids to run. And what was your favorite part of the race today? The, um, running. Finishing and supporting other people, really. And what race did you guys race in today? Uh, I went with the two mile and the half mile. I went the two mile and the half mile. For race director Thaya Redman, it's all about introducing young people to the spot early. If you look, you see all the families, aunts, uncles, grandparents, mom, dad, the little kids, strollers, all the way up to 12. And I think we did push the thousand runner limit today, so. A 
great finish to a wonderful event, but adults don't have to miss out on the fun. 2023 marks the 87th annual running of the Manchester Road Race in downtown Manchester. From Manchester High School, this has been Mia Gilbert reporting. Congratulations to all those who crossed the finish line on Saturday, and we'd like to thank the town for giving children from all around the opportunity to get out and get active. Well, Manchester, those are the stories we have for you this week. Make sure to follow our Instagram, MHS underscore television, and check out our website, mhstelevision.com, for all of our latest Pulse productions. I'm Erica Rozak. And I'm Jackson Converse, and this has been The, the Pulse. Pulse.